I am Jack and welcome back because today I'm going to give you guys a ranking video of all the movies to come out of the DC Extended Universe with the TV show Peacemaker with you guys on this video today. Now that we have a new movie for the first time since last summer with the Suicide Squad, I can't wait to give you guys a new ranking, but I can't wait to give you guys my ranking and let me know down below in the comment section what's your ranking of the DCEU right now from favorite to least favorite. I'd love to hear that down below in the comment section. We're going to have disagreements. We're going to have some very differing placements, but please be respectful about it down below in the comments. We can have a nice and civil discussion on where we place these projects in the DC universe, all the way from Man of Steel to Black Adam. And I can't wait to see you guys' rankings down below in the comment section. And with that said, let's get started. In last place is none other than Justice League 2017. This movie is an absolute disaster from the horrible behind the scenes troubles with Joss Whedon coming in and reshoots and racism and abuse allegations and with what the final product is where they reshot the entirety of this movie from what Zack Snyder has already made. This movie is a train wreck from start to finish. It's so overly saturated with red and it looks very ugly. And for a movie that had $300 million, this movie looks awful. It's very unpleasing to look at. The characters themselves here are done horribly. They took away all of Cyborg's storyline and reduced him down to just being some Quasimodo moody character for the entirety of the runtime. They made Aquaman so much of a jerk in this movie and they sexualized Wonder Woman. They made Flash a goofball for an unnecessary reason and they really made him look stupid. And this is by far the worst Batman has ever been in a movie. Well, he's not my least favorite actor to portray Batman. I love Ben Affleck as the character. This is the worst Batman has been on screen where he's certainly made to just the butt of jokes and he just gets beaten around a lot and he looks really useless compared to all these other characters when it's Batman for crying out loud. And Henry Cavill's Superman, CGI on his face looks horrible. Oh my God, bro. Oh, no, man. And it just looks so bad the more I see this movie or even look at it. And Steppenwolf, horrible villain in this movie, no motivation. Everything about this movie is wrong from the horrible dialogue to the horrible CGI, the bad pacing, the horrible behind the scenes production surrounding the reshoots of this movie. And this movie makes the Justice League so unimportant because as long as you have Superman, then the Justice League's not needed. You completely destroy the purpose of the Justice League. I can rant about how this movie's awful for days. This is one of the worst comic book movies I've ever seen in my life. And now that we got Zack Snyder's Justice League, I hope that I will never have to revisit this movie ever again. And so far, I'm doing a good job at that. In 12th place is Suicide Squad. This movie is a very interesting one for me because when I first saw this movie when it came out I loved it I saw it like I think three and a half times in the theaters and then I rewatched it again for the first time before the Suicide Squad came out last year and this movie got significantly worse on rewatch the music and the score feels so out of place and totally inconsistent with the rest of the movie the characters here are so lifeless and dull it's just so horribly paced. It takes way too long to get to the main point of things and to get the Suicide Squad together. And the villains with Enchantress is just horrible. I just could not understand the motivation or why they're trying to do things. And the characters' goals and motivations just do not make any sense in this movie. And it's just not very pleasing to look at. And action sequences are just okay. And it stinks because you got a really great cast here with Will Smith, Marco Robbie, Joel Kinnaman, Viola Davis. There's a good cast here. They're really trying, but this movie is another victim of studio interference because David Ayer only had six weeks to write a script for this movie. And just because of how Deadpool was so successful. And it really shows because this movie is just not satisfying at all. It's very slow. It's not interesting. It's not exciting. So many things happen that don't make any sense. Things just tie together in very odd ways. Or they just don't come together in the end. And this is just a really 
awful comic book movie that is once again plagued by studio interference. And if David Ayer has a cut out there, I would have loved to have seen what his version of the Suicide Squad is like because the final product we got here, it's another disaster from the DCEU. In 11th place is Wonder Woman 1984. This movie was a gigantic disappointment for me. I was so happy to see a new comic book movie when this was at the time where movies were being delayed and we didn't get any comic book movies that year really in live action outside of Birds of Prey. And I was so happy to see this movie and I was so excited because I loved the first Wonder Woman movie. And now that I watched the movie, I liked it, but then after I first saw it, the movie just got worse and worse and worse. It butchers the character of Wonder Woman where she wishes Steve back into existence. And rather than just have him magically come out out of thin air, like it should have because it's a magic wishing rock, he comes back in someone else's body and she apparently has sex with this guy. So you pretty much make Wonder Woman commit sexual assault and the movie glorifies this. Why? And in the end, it feels like there's no consequence to this. You took one of the most iconic female characters of all time you butchered her as a character. And not only did it do that where she commits an act of sexual assault, but this movie does nothing for her as a character, even from a story perspective. If you watch everything she's been in, in the movies, but you remove this movie, nothing changes because this movie doesn't add up with the DCEU timeline with Wonder Woman 1 and Batman v Superman. This movie just feels like it just does not add anything to this franchise. And to go on top of that, it's insanely long. It is way too long for its own good. So many scenes just drag out the movie and do not add anything to the overall story. Kristen Wiig is good as Cheetah, but she is not utilized well at all here. She has no purpose to be here in the story other than just be the one character that Wonder Woman can fight fist to fist with in the film. And Pedro Pascal as Maxwell Lord is one of the only good things about the movie. He carried this movie because he's the best character. But this movie is full of logic issues, plot cons inconsistencies, and the plot doesn't make sense. The magic wishing rock does not make any sense. If you're going to use a magic wishing rock, make rules for it so then we know how it works rather than have Steve come back in somebody else's body, but you can have walls and missiles come out of thin air. What? And this stinks because... As a Wonder Woman movie, this is a big letdown of a sequel, and this really significantly hinders my excitement for a third Wonder Woman movie. And so in the end, it's a movie where I used to like it at first, but now that I thought about it more, this movie is just not good at all. From here on out, everything from this next placement all the way to the top of the list, I like and I love it to an extent. Everything from Wonder Woman 84 and below are movies that I think are bad, they're not good, and I don't really recommend them. Everything else, I would give them a thumbs up and I would recommend them and I enjoyed them from good to amazing. In 10th place is Aquaman. Jason Momoa is awesome as the character of Aquaman. He's clearly having a time of his life as his character. From a visual standpoint, it's really great. Atlantis looks so terrific and beautiful. And I love how James Wan was able to visualize and bring this world of Atlantis to life. And I really liked Patrick Wilson as Orm, aka Ocean Master. He is a great villain of this movie and the perfect antagonist for Jason Momoa's Aquaman. And there's a fun adventure to be had where there's elements of Indiana Jones thrown to mix where Aquaman and Mera must go on this mission to find the Trident so that they can truly show that he is the one true king and stop Orm from unleashing war upon the surface. There's a fun movie to be had here. I really like Yaya Abdul-Mateen II as Black Manta. The costuming here is excellent and it's just a really fun movie overall and I love the third act. However, the movie's a little too long for its own good. 15 to 20 minutes of the movie could have been cut, and I don't think the dynamic between Aquaman and Mera is that great in this movie. It just feels like Jace Momoa fits the character of Aquaman more than Amber Heard fits Mera, in my opinion. And some of the writing feels very cheesy, and it just wasn't really the best in terms of dialogue. So it's just a movie where I like it. There's great visuals, there's fun to be had, but I do feel like as a whole, this is one of the more good, not great outings in the DCU that has some cheese to it, but it's still perfectly entertaining nonetheless. In ninth place is the new guy on the block, Black Adam. 
This movie and the movie up above are slightly interchangeable at the moment, but this is how I'm going to rank them for now. For a movie that The Rock's been trying to get made for 15 years, this was really fun. It's everything I expected from a movie with The Rock. It's a good comic book movie. I love the JSA, especially Dr. Fate and Hawkman. They're really awesome characters. The costumes are awesome. And the visuals and action se sequences are really cool. It really delivers on the spectacle side of things for this movie. And so as what they do with Black Adam as a character overall, and there's some moments of fun here because there are some really funny moments throughout this movie with running gags between Hawkman Adam Smasher and Black Adam and Hawkman. There's running gags throughout that work well and they're really funny and it's a well-paced movie for the most part. However, it does fall a little flat on characterization and the story because I don't think the human characters were all that great or compelling to follow. Some characters make very odd decisions that don't feel like they are very smart and the villain isn't that great. He's one of the weaker villains in the DCEU. And so you have a movie where it's not top tier DCEU. It's not the best in terms of story, but it is a very entertaining movie. And I love that end credit scene for what it is able to do. And it signals a pretty bright future for the DCEU. So in the end, I really enjoyed Black Adam just as a standard spectacle movie with The Rock. And I had a fun time with this one. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Put in the work, put in the hours, and take what's ours. In eighth place is Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie is one of the best actresses in the DCEU. She is fantastic as Harley Quinn. She's so fun to watch. She's charming. She really gives her A game as this character. And I love how it is stylized to feel like a Harley Quinn movie where she tells the story in her way and the action sequences are really cool some of the best action in the franchise and it's fast paced it's fun it's not the most consequential installment in the franchise but it is a very fun one nonetheless and i really liked this story about harley quinn and the birds of prey taking on ewan mcgregor's black mask he's a great villain i like the cast as these characters and so as just this story of Harley Quinn trying to become her own woman after she broke up with the Joker and how she found these characters and how they work together to fight off all of these bad guys. It's a really fun movie that's very stylized and feels very comic booky. However, outside of Harley Quinn, the characters aren't really as well characterized as they could have as much as I like Black Canary. I wanted more of Huntress. I didn't really think Cassandra Cain was that great as a character and I it could have done more with the runtime, maybe extend it for a couple more minutes and so as just flesh things out a lot more, give us more character development for the characters because Harley Quinn does get a lot of focus in this movie. And so as just the fact that there are aspects here from a logic standpoint that don't entirely make a lot of sense, but it's a movie where it's very fast paced, it's fun, it does exactly what it wants to do, and it does a good job at it. And because I love Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn and these cast members, I had a blast with this one. In seventh place is Wonder Woman. Patty Jenkins did a really great job of bringing Wonder Woman to life in this movie. Gal Gadot and Chris Pine were really good in this movie. I really like their dynamic with one another. And so as a story about how Diana from uh, Themyscira goes off to World War I with Steve Trevor and just sees the world and she goes on a mission to stop Ares. The action sequences here are terrific, especially with iconic scenes like No Man's Land and seeing Wonder Woman just explore the world and see how humanity is like this and just with war and action and chaos and what she does to stop this. It's a really great movie. The visuals and cinematography are terrific here. Again, like I mentioned before, there's great action sequences here. And I really liked how this movie introduces us to Wonder Woman in full. And so this is a movie where I really like that the first two acts are really great. And it saddens me that the third act happened to where it becomes a totally different movie. Ares is doing nothing but deliver monologues. And it's nothing but CG spectacle in a way where it did not add up with the rest of this movie. And it wasn't really a satisfying resolution to the movie because if the third act was a lot better, this movie would have been maybe up on the top three. It would have been even higher than it is. But I think the third act really holds this one back because everything else is great. 
love the first act, love the second half, I love the action, I really like the cast, and I really like the visuals and cinematography and the story. The third act really holds this one back from being higher, but nevertheless, I loved Wonder Woman. It's a great movie and it's a great Wonder Woman story where they were finally able to make a movie about the iconic character on the big screen. In sixth place is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. I'm going to be only talking about the Ultimate Edition because that's the only version and a definitive version in my mind. I will not be taking a theatrical cut for this movie. So as for BVS, this is a movie that gets a lot better as time goes on. When I first saw it, I loved it, but then over time I thought it's just okay. And then I watched the Ultimate Edition and it got so much better. The story makes a lot more sense. And I love that Zack Snyder was able to take these characters like Batman and Superman and really deconstruct the idea of superheroes and the mythology behind these characters and how he makes a political thriller story out of it. And I think if the movie was marketed as this political thriller with these characters and not, this movie's basically the big fight between Batman and Superman, the movie probably would have done better if it wasn't for that and studio interference happening with Warner Brothers cutting the movie. But for this movie in general, it's a well-directed movie. It's visually, it's gorgeous. Cinematography-wise, it's really great. I love the Hans Zimmer score here. And so has Ben Affleck's Batman, who I love. He is awesome in this movie. Just seeing a Batman who's lost his way, he lost his Robin, he's lost all hope for humanity, and he's just losing his ways, and he's doing all these things that Batman wouldn't necessarily do. And he sees how with the emergence of Superman that this is not good, he's a potential threat, we must wipe him out before anything bad could occur and how that drives him on his mission to stop Superman while Superman is dealing with the world, hating him, and how it's like they're afraid of him because of how powerful he is and that he's an alien. Where did he come from? There's a lot of political ideals and questions within this movie that really makes it a very interesting movie that has more detail the more you watch the movie. And so as the fact that it brings these two together in a very awesome way where, yeah, the fight between Batman and Superman could have been a lot longer, but there are details here that really make this movie even higher on the list than it would have because I really liked Batman and Superman here, how it progresses the story of Man of Steel where it feels like a Man of Steel successor and so as how it brings in Wonder Woman in a very awesome way. But I'm not too big on Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. He has some great moments. He has some great moments of lines and so as how he plays off of these characters. But I've never been that sold on that version of Lex Luthor. I'm always more of the fan of like Smallville's Lex Luthor or the DCAU's Lex Luthor. But Jesse's fine. And so as just the fact that at times it does feel like if you're not a fan of Snyder style, you're not gonna like this movie at all. And a lot of stuff happens in BVS to where it's my least favorite of the Snyderverse trilogy that Snyder has made with the DC movies. But this is a movie that just gets even better as time goes on for me. I love Superman, I love Batman. And this is a movie that I really enjoy. And the more I watch it, the more I really like this movie. In fifth place is Peacemaker. This show, blew me away. I was surprised by how much I loved Peacemaker. You will see the Suicide Squad high on this list. And I just came into the show hoping that it's gonna be fun and good. I didn't have the highest expectations for the Peacemaker show. And the first two episodes, while they were good, it took a bit for me to get into it. But once we get to the third episode and episodes came out, I started to really love this show and it gets better and better each Weak. I love these characters. I love Peacemaker and Vigilante and Harcourt and Merns. Everybody is awesome here. The action sequences are really good. It's funny. I love the character dynamics with one another and so as just how wacky their threats are and so as just how we see Peacemaker deal with the ghost of his past and some of the relationships with like his father and how he feels about what happened with Brick Flag and so as with these new characters, how he's on this mission, and, and how does everybody feel about working with Peacemaker? And John Cena has delivered his best acting work to date 
with Peacemaker. He is amazing here. I love him as his character, and James Gunn did a terrific job of making me care for the character of Peacemaker even more after the events of the Suicide Squad. It, it's a whole lot of fun. It's really funny. There are some great moments that made me sad and heartbroken. It is just the show that made me feel a lot of things. I had a lot of fun with it, and it has a very catchy and iconic intro. This show is one of the biggest surprises of the year for me. I loved it a lot. What holds this one back for me is I don't think the humor lands as well here as it did in the Suicide Squad or even both of James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And so at times the jokes don't really land for me. But outside of that, I love this show. I love these characters and I love this story James Gunn told with the characters and I am super excited for season two when that comes out because Peacemaker was an absolute blast. These next two placements are very interchangeable but this is where it's going to be for now as much as I really love these two movies and it's so hard for me to properly place these two because of how much I love them but this is how it's going to be for now. In fourth place is Man of Steel. This is also a movie that gets so much better as time goes on for me. I love what Zack Snyder was able to do with the character of Superman. Henry Cavill is one of my favorite actors to portray Big Blue himself. And visually and cinematography wise, it's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous looking movie. And this is the most we've ever seen Krypton in live action. And I really liked Superman in this movie and see him go from being this alien from outer space who lands on earth and he's learning up his, his heritage who where did he really come from who is he really him trying to make an identity for himself and he stumbles across his true heritage that he is from another world and that he's sent here to be their savior and how that comes into contact with the people of earth and so i was just seeing the early days of superman in this universe i love this movie michael shannon is on is probably the best villain in this entire franchise to date i love him as zod he is amazing with the line delivery and how menacing he comes off and so as us really feeling the tension and the stakes with zod as a villain and i really like the dynamic between henry cavill and amy adams as superman and lois they were really good in this movie i love the score by hans zimmer it's one of his best scores to date it's full of action and there's some amazing action here and seeing superman become the hero he is meant to be where even if all this stuff is going on we see him try to do whatever it takes to stop general zod and his kryptonian army from terraforming the earth it is a terrific movie that gets better as time goes on and this is one of my favorite superman movies of all time and i'm just so happy that we're finally getting henry cavill back as his character to do another superman movie because overall, I love Man of Steel. It's one of my favorite DC movies ever, and I love it. And it just is a movie where I really appreciate what this movie does with Superman. It does something new while still having some of those core elements of what makes Superman Superman. In third place is Shazam! This movie is amazing. It's one of my favorite DC movies of the past decade. I love what David F. Sandberg was able to do with Shazam as a character and how he made a movie that feels like it has some elements of horror, but it actually does have a lot of elements that feel reminiscent of the Richard Donner Superman movies. This is a whole lot of fun. It's really funny. It's well paced. And I really love these characters and the actors who play these characters, especially asher angel as billy batson and zachary levi as shazam they are so fun to watch just seeing the uh, billy batson have the abilities and the appearance of a man when he says the word shazam it is such a fun movie all throughout it feels very reminiscent of old dc movies like the richard donner superman movies and it has heart where it really has a message about family and being together and it's just such a cute and delightful movie and the third act is just a whole lot of fun i just cannot praise this movie enough because of how much i enjoyed it and what it does for being in the dceu and although it took a bit for things to get rolling and obviously the, the villain is good but very much the same kind of villain you get from these movies 
there's a lot of fun to be had with Shazam, and I love this movie a lot, and I am super excited for Shazam Fury of the Gods next year. In second place is The Suicide Squad. James Gunn delivered another amazing comic book movie with The Suicide Squad. I love how he once again brings everything he learned from those Guardians of the Galaxy movies, applies them here. He brings in more characters that the general public doesn't know, like Ratcatcher 2, Peacemaker, Bloodsport, Polka Dot Man, King Shark, and so as TDK. And he once again makes us care for these characters. It's one of the most comic booky movies I've ever seen from the comic book genre. It's violent, it's funny, it's wild, it's action packed. It has a great soundtrack once again. And I love these characters and how when a movie about the Suicide Squad really shows you that these characters actually are a Suicide Squad where so many characters bite the dust in many different ways and many different points throughout this movie, you know you got a good Suicide Squad here. There are stakes, there's danger, character dynamics are here and there, and there's a lot of great relationships here. There's great action sequences here throughout this movie, and I love the bonds that a lot of the characters have with one another as they go on this mission to stop Project Jotunheim, which eventually is revealed to be Starro. I really love this movie. It is just a movie where it's just so fun and knew exactly what it wants to do. It's crazy. It's wild. It's bonkers. There's a lot of fun sequences here that I love, and it's one of the most comic booky films in both the DCEU and just in general. I love what James Gunn was able to do with this movie and how things play out. It's amazing in the opening and it's amazing in the end. And I really love this movie so much that it comes in in second place. But coming in at first place is Zack Snyder's Justice League. I actively despised the 2017 Justice League movie so much and how Warner Brothers really hindered that movie and really ruined this franchise for a time to where the state of the franchise was in limbo after that. And thankfully, we got this movie last year and I was hoping that it's going to be at least good or great. I was blown away by how much I loved this movie. It's four hours long, but it feels like a two hour and 50 minute movie. It's well paced. It fleshes out all these characters so well from even Cyborg and Flash and Aquaman, where it gives you so much that the 2017 movie lacked in every way. This is a superior version of that movie on every front. Zack Snyder managed to make all these characters well developed and flesh them out in just four hours. And you got some beautiful scenes like Clark and Lois out in the fields, especially with him knowing I have a second chance at life and Flash running back in time by running through the speed force to reverse time so that they have another chance at saving the world and Cyborg lifting a woman out of poverty. There is so much to love about this movie. It is one of the most optimistic comic book movies I've ever seen where we see characters help other people. We see the Justice League form for the first time and fight up against Steppenwolf and his army from finding the three mother boxes. It takes a very simple story idea and executes them brilliantly. I love what it does with these characters. It redeems Batman in this movie where he feels much more like what he was in BVS and it feels like a natural continuation of where he was in that movie. And so as bringing back Henry Cavill Superman in a much more respectful and positive light from BVS rather than that horrible adaptation they did with him in the 2017 version. And it redeems Wonder Woman, especially after what they did with her in Wonder Woman 1984. This movie is epic. It's grand. It's very mythological. And it's so satisfying where I love the start. I love the characters. I love the emotional weight. There are moments that made me happy. There are moments that made me cry. There are moments that made me so scared for our characters. This movie has it all. It's one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. It's the true definitive Justice League movie in my mind. And I love what Zack Snyder was able to do with these characters. And so that's where it ends, where it ends on a note of hope and optimism to where you know about the nightmare future and all that. But with that little scene with Bruce and Martian Manhunter, it made me 
watch this movie in the end knowing that years of this movie being in limbo, whether the Snyder Cut exists or not, it was worth it in the end because I love this movie. I love what it does with these characters and it's a much better version of the story than what we got back in 2017. And this is, for me, the best movie in the DCEU. So it comes in at number one. That's my ranking of the DCEU from worst to best. What's your ranking? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos I have planned. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. So please go do that while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more.